Thank you so much, Marlene. This is a joy to be finally with you all again. And I'm so excited that we could go through this. Um, I absolutely I tell everybody that I'm a Myers-Briggs nerd and I'm a self-confessed one, I must say. Uh, the interesting thing about Myers-Briggs is it has been around for a very long time. And some of you may have been exposed and, and worked with some of the other strength finders, um, other types of personality assessments, and a lot of them are really good. Uh, but most of them are based on some of the same principles. And, you know, the fun thing for us as women is that the Myers-Briggs was developed by a mother-daughter team. And they were really curious about Carl Jung's psychiatric personality archetypes. And so they went to decode that for us because they were very complicated the way Carl Jung had de described them. And it was just almost impossible for the average person to get their head around it and really understand, well, what does that mean to me? So Myers-Briggs got together many, many years ago, so goes back to the 40s and started researching it and came up with this assessment that has stood the test of time. So I first became exposed to it in my career a little bit late, I will say. Uh, I wish I'd known about this when I first got out of college or even in college or before. Um, my first job, uh, I was not successful and I couldn't figure it out. And I actually got fired from my first job. My second job, I was wildly successful. And it was just this PR job and I was writing and meeting people and out talking to the press. And it was just a very exciting time for me. Uh, it was in my third job when I worked for four guys who'd gotten their MBAs at Harvard together, and they did a lot of leadership training. Uh, we went into major companies, like some of the ones you work with, and we would kind of take apart the teams and the leaders and really talk to them about their leadership style. And so we would give Myers-Briggs or the DISC test, some of you may be familiar with that, and trying to help each person understand their own strengths and weaknesses. Because once you harness that, once you know who you really are, it just opens the world to you. So ta-da, I figured out after I took this, the reason I was not successful in my first job. Now, some of you who know me, and you could probably tell that I'm a big extrovert on the Myers-Briggs. I'm an ENTP. I'll just tell you all, all that up front. And in my very first job, I wasn't paying attention when I went in to interview. And this is something that all of you can help your teams with or with people you're bringing on board or for yourself. When you go into an environment, I want you to really pay attention to that culture to, and you know, we don't get to go in the offices as much as we used to, but you know, when you can go in and feel the vibe of what's going on, you'll probably see, do I fit in here? And you gotta be really careful with that because if you don't feel right, then you probably won't be you're 100% in that job. So when I went back and thought about it, that first job I had was a very introverted culture. We were all told to go into our cubicles, this was an advertising agency, and come up with ideas and at the end of the day, come out and present them. Well, that was the kiss of death for an extrovert. My way of ideating and thinking and exploring ideas was to bounce them off other people. And there I was in this introverted environment where I could not even talk to my coworkers very much except for at lunch. So it was really, really a tragic kind of situation for an extrovert and I didn't do well and I left. I mentioned that second job where I was doing so well, that's because all the burners were going. That's because I was out there talking to people. I was ideating, I was busy with people all day long with people and it just energized me. So I think the big thing here about what I'm saying, and Stephanie, we can roll into that first slide. This is a slide I hope all of you will take to heart. And it's called the strengths and situation slide. Now, all of us have our strengths. Let's put the weaknesses behind us. We have our weaknesses too. And Myers-Briggs tells you what that is. So if you really study your Myers-Briggs type, it's gonna explain to you what you're really good at and maybe those areas where you're not so good. But let's focus on your strengths. That's the thing, because we're never gonna get behind uh, the weaknesses. I mean, they're gonna be there. That's who we are. That's who we're, how we're made up and that's okay. We all have weaknesses. You're not gonna ever change that. But let's focus again on these strengths. Okay, think of your strengths. Then I want you to think of another circle and it's called situation. Now, anytime you can put your core strengths 
to work in a situation, that's where the success is. So the more those two circles eclipse, the more that strengths and situation eclipse, that's when you're gonna be absolutely most successful. And anyone on your team that you're working with, look at the situation they're in, look at their strengths. Are those things coming together? Because if they're not, you are frustrated, your team members are frustrated because they're just not in a place where they can perform well.